folks, welcome inside the Paris Sea Palace, high above 3733 East Broadway. This is a live edition of the Jake Feinberg Show. Coming to you live on Power Talk. Please go to our website, powertalk.live. Download our free app and stream all of our live local programming, including Solomon on Blast, the Jim Parisi Show, and yours truly, the Jake Feinberg Show. Can't thank you enough for making us part of your day today and joining us on this holiday weekend. Such an honor to connect with a guy with an artist who has always commanded respect because of the fact that he has tried to stay true to himself and create improvisational music that feels good and is true to himself, not something that might might appeal to uh, big pop record companies. Uh, At the end of the day, it's about being in the moment, expressing yourself truthfully on the bandstand in that moment and allowing your peers or having your peers accept what you're expressing at that moment. That, in this host's mind, is jazz or melodic improvisation. Julian Priester, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Jake. Uh, It's a pleasure. I am honored to uh, have this opportunity to speak to you and your listeners. Uh, So... Let's go with it. <laughs> Did you uh, catch that intro opening track? Did you? That was uh, that was Lullaby from Realville. That was you on Bone with Sun Ra. Oh, wow. you know, I <laughs> I heard and I listened to it. I said, "Well, who is that?" <laughs> 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 there's a there's a I wanted to start there's a cat that has left uh, left this planet but he is one of one of the most prodigious uh, arrangers and producers and in bass players I was just wanted you to talk a little bit about Richard Evans uh, he played bass on that but oh. I mean, he's a Chicago cat too yes right he's a, a, a classmate of mine actually really uh, we both went went to do Sabo High School uh, in Chicago. And uh, I think we graduated at, at the same time, uh, same year, I should say. That uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Richard and I go all the way back. Uh, he's he's a wonderful bass player, uh, as you indicated, and just a you know, just a great person uh, in in all aspects. Uh, yeah. Could you? I mean, yeah. I guess uh, more. What I'm what I'm trying to get. What what's amazing to me is that you were. Uh, you and Richard were at the center of one of these. I mean, a lot of the of the musicians that were coming up from the South, uh, the African American musicians uh, coming up the Mississippi Delta, they didn't stop in St. Louis. They went to Chicago, and ultimately, yes, ultimately, Chess Records was started by. Uh, forgive me here, but uh, it was Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, Ahmad Jamal, yes. and Muddy Waters, and you had yes. a chance to play with those those blues cats i mean really the cats that were right. and i want you to talk about the authenticity of that of those opportunities and how it emboldened you to be yourself because as far as i'm concerned you go down to market street in chicago i talked to phil upchurch you know there you had the blind dobro players playing for change uh it was one of the most yeah. bubbling hotbeds of regional music in the world and I wanted you to put my audience inside there because a lot of peep, peeps don't re- realize you played with, with Muddy and, and Bo Diddley. Yes, yes. Well, that was in, during a, a rich uh, period uh, for art in, in Chicago. Yeah, for, I'm speaking of jazz music. And uh, there were clubs uh, in the neighborhood that we could go and listen to the music. Uh, we could also go and, and, and have jam sessions in those clubs and play with the artists that were brought in from places like New York and, and other, other, uh, other centers of, of the, the development of jazz. New York, of course, was the, the premier location uh, because that's where Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Tony Rollins, the Alonius Monk, and the rest of them uh, Applied their trade. Exactly. Uh, it, it was it's a, a, a very rich and, and rewarding uh, place to be in that period, and uh, I was very fortunate to uh, have an opportunity to experience the life, the jazz life in New York at a very young age. I was 21 years old when uh, Lionel Hampton uh, uh, hired me to join his uh, orchestra, and he was headquartered in New York City. Uh, so that was my introduction, and uh, that was in 1956. 
and well, two years later, I officially made New York City my home, my residence, and uh, stayed there for many years, uh, and just you know, had many, many opportunities to perform with with the giants of jazz, Max Roach and uh, you know, uh, Art Blakey, Philly Joe Jones, Elvin Jones, were the drummers that I, you know, uh, had an opportunity to be inspired by, uh, and I really was inspired by them. Uh, I think they really were uh, uh, the, the secret of my development into this, uh, well, semi-well-known <laughs> uh, trombonist. Uh, <laughs> the trombone it, it, it itself during that period was playing uh, third fiddle uh, to the uh, trumpet and the saxophone uh, by somebody's design. I mean, I think the, the composers and, and arrangers sort of treat, treated the trombone as a, a, a backup instrument uh, to to play the, the uh, I think a support I should, they were in a support role let me put it like that and uh, very few trombone players had an opportunity to stand out front uh, there were some good soloists back then uh, but even then their their opportunity the opportunities for them to be recognized as the premier artists, jazz artists, were, were well, they weren't uh, plentiful, let me put it like that. Some of them, like J.J. Johnson, uh, well, of course, uh, Jack Teagarden, uh, stand, were standouts, and then there were the, you know, during the swing era, there were band leaders who played the trombone. Uh, I'm thinking about Tommy Dorsey and Glenn Miller, and, uh, you know, there were others. Um, they, but they no, I, 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 want, I want I want to ask you because I mean T Gar I mean J J Johnson's a cat unto himself he he was like the the yes. he was the cat but like T Garden was playing more in like a Dixieland bag there was improvisation but it definitely was yes. it was not like straight it wasn't in, in a bebop context I just before, no it was not I want you to I really this is so important because in my mind at thirty nine years old Julian I I look at this show. And this is a show dedicated to the people's history of music, and it's all music, and and yeah. and we've gotten so stratified in music. So I have a couple questions for you. Going back to Muddy and Bo Diddley, number one, were you playing the bone on the bandstand with them? And number two, were those cats could they could those cats play jazz? Uh huh. Uh, yeah. No, no. They 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 may have been able to play, but they they it they. The emphasis was on the, on blues. Yes, uh, and there's a, 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 a really a strong connection between blues and and, and jazz music. Uh, they are well, they're they family. You know, and jazz players must be familiar with and have some command over the blues in order to reach into the soul of the listener. The blues, uh, yeah, like gospel music, uh, has a has a spe very special uh, ability to touch the the, the the soul, to touch, to stimulate the the, the spirit, uh, and to heal uh, and inspire. Uh, all of those qualities are, are available to the listeners of of, the, 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 of jazz music. Because there, there, there is elements of the blues, there's elements of, of the gospel in jazz music. So there's a, a close uh, family relationship there. there. I mean, without those elements, uh, jazz music would not be as popular or as influential as it wound up being. And uh, well, I want you, you know, to go deeper. This are, is so important. You are nailing this. I am totally in a zone right now. I don't, okay, I, my belief, and I've talked to enough cats to know that younger peeps that are trying their best, that are, you know, technically, and their, their facility is very strong, but they don't seem to have an adherence or a respect for the soul of the blues. I don't hear the blues and jazz anymore. In fact, sometimes I wind up staring at a wall because someone's facility is so good, but it's so sterile. Can you please talk yeah. about your own experience with the blues in terms of playing the blues and how that 
how they're linked inseparably with jazz, ultimately to transcend and touch the spirit and ma- play spiritual music. Yes. yes, right, right. Well, it all goes back to my youth. Uh, I grew up in a, in a household with uh, siblings who, who loved, loved jazz music. They loved the blues. There was blues in, in blues recordings. Mm. And uh, uh, we had a piano in the home. Uh, and, and a few of my siblings also played the piano, and they also included blues and 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 and, and uh, gospel music. Uh, my my father happened to be a, a, a minister, gospel, uh, a Baptist minister, I should say, and uh, we had that spiritual element in the in the home. Uh, we would gather around the piano wow. and sing wow. the spirituals. Wow! Wow! Uh, yes. Yes. Was he? Would, so, would you? Would you, uh, would you say that he was? He? A, a, you said he was a preacher or pastor or what? What was his role? He, he was a minister. He was the assist, assistant pastor at the Great Bethesda Baptist Church. Uh, it, was a, it was a church that my mother and father and my whole family uh, sort of uh, frequented, mm. Uh, mm. and uh, uh, I, I happened to be the, the youngest of the clan. Uh, so uh, there was occasions where I was carted off to the church. Sunday school was was a was a, a, a feature, uh, a regular feature, I should say. Uh, and uh, up until I was nine years old, uh, I, I, I was in the church, you know, uh, many times a week, and and definitely on Sunday. Uh, was it then, would, would you uh, say would you say it was a I'm always fascinated was it something along did you have was there a modified trap set in there were there tambourines this is what I'm talking about I've interviewed yeah. I interviewed both the James Brown's drummers they both came out of the sanctified church that's where the rhythms yes. the, the rhythms came from that so what kind of rhythms were going yeah. on is that the kind of church you were going to no no this was a this was a Baptist Church and they, they had to traditional Baptist mm-hmm. uh, ceremonies. Uh, it wasn't sanctified. Uh, we the, the music in the church was uh, did have the flavor of of, of you know, gospel music, uh, and of course, being African American uh, patrons. I just should, probably shouldn't use that that word patron, but uh, uh, it'll serve my my it serves my purpose for now. <laughs> it's okay. Being, Af- <laughs> being Af- an African American, you know, uh, congregation, church, congregation, uh, congregation, 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 yeah, congregation. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, of, of course, all those elements were were present in, mm-hmm. in the church. You know, the, they they brought the the, the blues, the, the spirit of the blues, they, you know, and uh, the, the spirit of of suffering, uh, there was also joyful, uh, uh, many joyful moments there, uh, and all of that was reflected in the music, uh, in the choir. Uh, my mother played piano f- uh, for the choir, and uh, uh, well, it was a rich experience for me. Uh, but my connection really happened in the home. It wasn't didn't really come from the church that way, although. By the time I became interested in music, the, the church experience, the gospel experience, was already absorbed in my in my uh, mind, in my body, in my soul, and uh, it, was, it, it, it just came in, out in the music. It was expressed in the music naturally. Uh, there was no conscious effort to to play gospel music. It was just part of my spirit. It was part of my character. And uh, the blues also, since it was connected to the gospel, uh, you know, that uh, it was also a very important element in in my uh, repertoire, in, in developing a repertoire, uh, developing an ability to express uh, the, the spiritual uh, the spiritual uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, flavor spirits the spiritual substance 
uh, in, in music, in the music that uh, we call jazz. Hmm. Uh, this is really fascinating. That, yes. Did, I mean, because um, w- w- was it fair to say, because I, I talked to Tootie Heath a couple times. He was, in Philly, His the first bands he was in were R&B bands. Rhythm and blues. Were you yes. you were were you in rhythm and blues bands before you came to New York? I did everything. I, I, I you know my my love for for music uh, did not uh, discriminate. <laughs> uh, but, right know, on. Right. I, I, dig, I dig. I dig. I dig. I dig. Yes. So R R R and B, uh, blues, jazz, uh, even uh, uh, marching. I participate in every opportunity that I that came my way. Uh, if it was a marching band, uh, we played uh, military-style music. Uh, and, of course, I, I also played oh, in orchestras that were tied to, uh, well, shows. Uh, we, we would be the backup band for, for, for a well-known artists who would come to Chicago to, uh, to do a show. And... Uh, uh, actually, Sun Ra's band was one of those. Uh, really? Uh, we, we, yes, we we were the house band at the uh, Persian Ballroom, uh, and uh, that was the uh, the the uh, kind of the for uh, well-known artists who came to Chicago, came through Chicago, I should say. And and perform for, for the Chicago uh, music lovers. Uh, and the one one event that stands out in my mind when Billy Holiday performed at the at the Persian Ballroom, and uh, the she had a, the music for the band, but the trombone part had been lost. So I had an opportunity not to play behind her, but I had an opportunity to go to sit in the audience and listen to her. And my God. That was an unforgettable experience because they 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 blacked out the, the lights. They did they cut the lights off and put a pinpoint spotlight on Billie Holiday's face, and she sang. I don't know the the, the, the name of the song that she sang, but it was captivating. You know, I fell in love. Mm-hmm. Oh, I dig, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I and, dig it so much. Yes, yes. I mean, this, yes. this talking to Julian Priester here live on the Jake Feinberg show and sort of just all over the place. I I. I, I, I'm obsessed with this whole idea. You said before, in fact, Philly Joe, Max, and, and Elvin, those guys kind of unlo- yes. unlocked uh, the rhythmic patterns of jazz. Um, I, you know, yes. I, I, can you just talk about when you got to New York? Mm, it was sort of the tail end of bebop. Uh, there was this, clearly, this new language of music that was being created it had a lot to do yeah. with, with the drummers. Can you talk to the audience about that kind of music, how the, the Cats, specifically Max and Elvin and, and Philly, how they broke up the time and the form of the music and how, it, yeah. you know, because this to me is the most scintillating and experimental time and misunderstood time in melodic yeah. improvisation. So I just want you to break that down. Late 50s New York when you got there. Right. Right. Well, uh, this actually started in the '40s after the World War II. After World War II, mm-hmm. um, bebop, which had suffered through the war, through through that war, because they didn't, the, the players didn't really have an opportunity to record. <coughs> excuse me, the players didn't have an opportunity to record because of the rationing of of uh, vinyl during the war, uh, and so not many records were made during that period. When the war was over, there was a new player on the block, and that player was. was I, I, I'm, I'm using that, that, that term as as a, uh, uh, a euph- euphemism. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, 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 what I'm really referring to was the the ad, advent of uh, cool jazz. When uh, cool jazz became the Popular music, I guess, as a result of, of, of Miles Davis doing the the uh, recording of Date Birth. Was it? What did he call it? Um, birth of the Cool. Yeah. 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 Birth, birth of the Cool. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, so the the uh, the attention uh, the record companies jumped on that new product, 
it was popular. As to, when you turn on the radio, all all of the disc jockeys were playing the, the West Coast uh, inspired uh, cool jazz. That's what they called it, and uh, bebop was ignored. Okay, now that caused a lot of uh, anger. You know, I, the, the, the beboppers were irate in in the in the, the, the condition they found themselves in. Uh, they weren't uh, being sought after to record or perform. Some of the well-known ones were, uh, but the up-and-coming be beboppers like myself, uh, we had little choice. Uh, we had to really exercise uh, our, our kind of stubborn stick to it ness to stick to our dream of playing music that was uh, true to our uh, heritage, the music of uh, that was uh, started actually back in the beginning. Uh, uh, it was Armstrong uh, and and, and uh, his mentor. Uh, I'm having a, a senior moment. No, here. you're doing uh, great. I want to. This is out. so important. You're you're nailing this, by the way. So don't even worry. I'm I'm curious though. Was the cool was the cool jazz not authentic enough to your heritage? Uh, am I reading that correctly? That was more. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, well, it was it was it was connected in a way, but. The spirit wasn't as I dig. strong. I dig. It wasn't as present. Can you talk about the you know? spirit? The, why the spirit was stronger? I, this is this is my show is about spirit. And why was the spirit yes. not as strong as as it was in, be, in in something like bebop? Well, yeah. Let's 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 go back a little ways to the historical development of, of, of this music. Uh, it came out of the brothels. It came out of the, you know like the the bad places, the the places that were were looked down upon exactly by you know the, the, uh, uh, the spiritual element in the, in the country that the people who were Christians uh, they felt that the jazz was evil and uh, as a result they ignored it and, and, and avoided it and uh, you know, gave it a, a, a negative uh, it, uh, it had a negative impression of it and and with that in mind, it was only those people who uh, also had a wild, you know, a wild nature. I'm, I'm being awkward with just what happened. Is only those people who were not uh, inhibited mm -hmm. that who 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 would who would listen to jazz, who who, who would fall in love with jazz. Um, but the bulk of the of the, the Public uh, were I don't know if they were afraid or they were just intimidated or they just felt that uh, jazz was evil. It was uh, the product of the devil. What year and, was? What uh, years are this? What years are these? We're talking about uh, the twenties, nineteen twenties. Unbelievable! 1930s. Unbelievable! Yeah. And what? And was yeah. is there any truth? I talked to Big Black a couple times. Is there any truth to the idea that? It was called jazz, J A S S, meaning you go to the brothel to get a piece of, you know what? It was, and then all of a sudden, yeah, and then and then they added yeah. the Z's. The white white journalists eventually said, "Well, we, if we're going to market this stuff, we yeah. can't call it." Is there is there truth to that? That is, yeah, I believe there is truth to that. Of course, you know, not being present during that period, I'm, you know, I can only go by what I've sure. read and and uh, you know uh, what I'm told. Uh, but the attitudes of you know the, that have followed jazz even to this day um, have st you know still uh, have that negative connotation uh, to it and of uh, the, the religious uh, uh, the folks in this country still suspect that it's not holy. Uh, I totally you dig know, you, man. I dig. That, I dig it. I yeah, dig it. Yeah. And uh, so we, you know, the lovers of the music, the jazz music, uh, are really trying hard to to 
to change the, the minds of those people who have uh, uh, a negative uh, impression, a ne- negative, uh, yeah, the impression of the music, and and for that reason, they they will not support it. Um, so we we've lived through it uh, this long, and slowly but surely, it's it's being accepted. You can you can you can go to school and and study jazz music. Uh, it's not the way I learned it, but uh, it it it's still uh, a po- positive development uh, because the young people are being exposed to it and they they kept becoming more interested in it. So I think that jazz as an art form uh, has a good possibility of sustaining itself uh, and being supported not just by Americans, but by people all over the, the world, uh, where it's already happening, and, and you know, it's, it's not just a, a, a United, I mean, an American phenomenon. Um, you have people in Europe who are, uh, have uh, adopted the the, uh, the the music form, uh, and who have accepted it as an art form, not just a, 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 a commodity. Uh, no, I, 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 yeah. you know, I mean, I mean, that's I, I only wonder about the idea of, you know, the idea that uh, these cats come out and they're and they're very well trained. Uh, first of all, it's 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 music that's made within academia, where unlike you guys, it was you guys were in the on the cutting room floor uh you know together communally yeah. it was it was a street you were st- all street scholars and then on top of that yeah. like i was just transcribing bu- my interview with buster williams and i mean it's just ridiculous that when you were with m wandishi that you would spend you you spent a month at the london house and that was oscar peters yeah. that was oscar peterson's haunt Ed Thigpen and Ray Brown. Right. So that kind of dinner audience was like, you know, they choked on their food when, when you guys opened up with those <laughs> those flutes and percussion. But you know what the owner did? The owner said to you, yes. you know, man, I, I love the music, but let's, st- let's start it later. The point is that you're on the bandstand. There's a touring circuit, a, a thriving I, I, – jazz is a world music, and, and the way it will survive yes. is through the world. But if it loses yes. – if it loses, it's the heritage, and we and we. I want to swing back to bebop and why you think there's more spirit there than, than the cool. But if it loses the roots of the, it's the only true American art form. It's you know, if it it cannot lose that that black classical element to it, and that all goes back right. to the blues and the spirituals. Um, right. But I but the spirit. So do you feel like the cool jazz? They were trying to kind of strip the spirit out of it. Or they were making it more commercial, or, and then well, I mean, I, this is a, very important, right? Well, it, 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 let me put it like this: uh, it had it, its spirit. It, its spirit was influenced by uh, the lifestyle and you know the, the, of, of, of folks who lived on the West Coast. Uh, they didn't have the. Uh, I don't know how to describe the difference, but it culturally is, is different from the East Coast. Uh, and and I think that that is, accounts for the difference in the character of the music. Uh, that the music that's, recru- re- re- uh, that's produced on, on various coasts. I dig. Uh, yeah, you're right. The school jazz reflects West Coast culture. I dig, I dig. And yeah. bebop reflects East Coast East Coast. I like culture. that. So, I like uh, that. I, you, yeah, you, yeah, you're right. You're right. Totally. Yes, yes. So that you know, that's normal. I mean, I you know, I I was upset, you know, at the development because you know, I'm, I'm desperately trying to play bebop and and uh, you know Charlie Parker, you know, he was my hero. I I, I still try and 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 match his brilliance. Because uh, that, that was the, that was the, the challenge. If you want to play this music, you have to be brilliant. And Charlie Parker was was the, the perfect uh, example. He wasn't the only one, but he was the perfect 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 example for a horn player. And uh, you know there were others. Uh, you know I, I I think that Sonny Rollins and Miles Davis and 
uh, also, you know, of course, Dizzy Gillespie, I can't leave him out. And there are oh, many others. Yeah, it's Clifford Brown. Who, Clifford Brown left us too soon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, of yeah. course. Yes. Yeah. And and uh, so, you know, along those lines, uh, the, the, I, I, I found my uh, inspiration there. And uh, to, to be divided, uh, I, I resisted. I resisted playing in, in the West Coast style. Uh, although it was the popular, you know, during that period in the mid in the in the 1950s, in the mid 50s, and early 60s, um, the West Coast style of music was the way to go if you wanted to make money, uh, and uh, that that has always been a, a challenge for for arts artists, you know. Because let me let me just let me just wanna... let me just back up what you just said. I mean, as far as keeping an adherence to the East Coast burning burning spiritual music melodic music uh uh, abby lincoln 59 max these are all albums you you were on uh max roach tommy turrentine johnny griffin you did your first album as a leader in 1960 philly joe sun ra blue mitchell booker little freddie hubbard you don't see much you don't see any left coasters they might have moved out there eventually but that's all these coast cats all of them yeah 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 uh, yeah, that's that's all these coast cats, uh, and that is where my heart was. I, I uh, uh, well, if 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 opportunity presented itself and I was in a position, to, you know, to, I, if if I had an opportunity to play with a West Coast musician, I would do it. Uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't reject uh, that opportunity because, as I said before, I was in love with the music. You know, and and any opportunity to to participate, uh, I I took advantage of, and uh, so I, I wasn't uh, how can I put it, prejudiced in in that way. Uh, music served as as a modif- a modifier, uh, so so any any discomfort I had was overpowered by my desire <laughs> to play music and. Uh, that, that that's a bit I've, that's the way I've I've conducted my my life. Uh, you know, it's it's been over six decades uh, doing that, we're living that that life, and uh, of course, uh, it's profited. I have profited as a result. Uh, yeah, it's been a struggle, and still is. Uh, the jewel, um, the jewel yeah. is the jewel is the struggle, right? I mean that that, that yeah, that's. Yeah. But here, okay, I, this is so important because I, you know uh, we're talking about uh, you guys being frustrated uh, that you know because yeah. you were in love with bebop, and obviously there was. I mean, the West Coast cool was it was great music. It just was different. So this, yeah. I'm re, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm producing a documentary on Stan Getz right now, and I, oh yes, yes, and I. I found this album. I finally found it on vinyl. Um, it's uh, it was an album of Getz and Bill Evans. This is prior to Girl from Ipanema, so they were still really trying to establish yeah. themselves as you know major oh. major artists. And I'm, I want to read you something off the because this isn't Independence Day weekend, and I want you to set the record straight because it seems to me the way the the holier than thou the the the, the church the Christians despised they didn't trust jazz they thought it was ill repute yeah. music again i want to read you this quote it seems to me that our intuition as a country here has never really been that sharp and i want to read you this quote and then i want you to respond to it because i think you not only okay. Did, okay so okay this is what the this is from a downbeat article on the back of the record that i found it said uh oh. uh this session, Bill Evans gets and came in '63, a time that was critical for both, more in terms of public acceptance than in artistic development. The latter category was beyond dispute. Each developed a style so personal, so irresistibly intimate that nothing within or without music could influence them. Now, this is the key part: the advent of the Coltrane Archie Shep school of hard, angry message music did not deter Getz from his sensitive approach to tenor okay hard yeah. angry message music um i yeah. don't i mean i know i've talked to jimmy cobb and there were peeps that would get up around the time that you you played with on that african brass album 
when Train was starting to change his his his, feet, his style and, and and what he was doing, people would get up and say, "Make him stop! Make him stop!" You know, they they they'd be very upset. But 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 I I guess white journalists like myself, I would probably slit my wrists if I was the one yeah. calling that angry message music. But why was it so misinterpreted? And in fact, because it was music of unity and love. Right, right. Yeah, I understand why uh, th- th- that was uh, misunderstood. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's connected to that uh, the transition, uh, you know, during the 50s uh, when the, the bebop was sort of faced with the first thing called his hard bop. And, and uh, this is all in re- reaction to the change in the commercial uh uh, exploitation of of the music. Interesting, uh, interesting. In the West Coast, wow. it, yeah. When 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 bebop was put on the, the back the, the the back shelf, and and the West Coast style became the the uh, favorite of 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 the media and well of, of the of the uh, producers of jazz, of the record companies. I'm, I'm speaking of that, uh, and it all has to do with marketing, and the effect of that ha- that that had on on East Coast position, we were angry. I mean, I I, I, I uh, relate to the East Coast, although I, I came up in Chicago, uh, but my inspiration came from the players on the East Coast. So that's where my heart lies. Absolutely. And even even in, in Chicago, we were affected by that, and and as, as a result. We've consciously changed our style, uh, not, not our style, but yeah, I guess you, I can say that to describe what happened. We consciously introduced a, 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 a style of music that we felt could not be imitated, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, as a defense, as, as a way to, to recapture uh, the attention of, of music lovers, uh, and also in, in our desire to, uh, uh, to how can I put this, promote the development of art, uh, and, and, and that art has to change with the times, with the, with the, with the, uh, going on in the population, you know, art is like a reflection of the, the population. It speaks to our emotions, and uh, we felt that, okay, it may come off as anger, and there was a, an element of anger there. In Chicago, the uh, AACM uh, developed as a result Absolutely. Of, yeah. of, of, of this, this phenomenon, uh, trying to gain attention uh, to the music, to re- I say regain regain attention to the music, to, the, to their particular style of music, uh, and it's it's a hard fight, and you know it it, it, it because you, you you fight not you're not fighting the music, you're not fighting the musicians, you're not really fighting the West Coast style, it's the the uh, uh, the industry. The influence of the industry is it the is it the, is it the is it the cultural biases of the people with power and, and money that they, they 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 because this is the this is the key. Well, Go ahead. I don't know if it's it's it, 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 it's that it, it's it's the result of the the commodification of the of the, of the music. Right. You know, as soon as the industry got a hold of it and and put it up for sale, they uh, clouded its. Uh, uh, its personality, the music personality, it the the uh, identity with art was it was uh, ignored. I mean, it became oh, how can I put this? Oh, I, I, I I've used uh, ugly words. I don't want to <laughs> use these words. No, you, I mean this is we are we are streaming. You can totally you. This is not a. We are not. We're fully streaming, but you can use whatever words you want. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, um, it, it resulted in, 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 in the expression of, in, in an effort to, to uh, 
to develop a new voice in the way that we presented this music. Now, bebop was done. Hard bop came and it was done. Uh, there was a confusion uh, and it was different efforts by different people to regain some validity in, in, in the music. Um, uh, and there was a, a, a movement, I guess, you know, Sun Ra and Cecil Taylor and oh, uh, Archie Shep, of course, uh, and uh, many others uh, adopted a, a style of performing that uh, was not easily, as I said before, not easily imitated. But what happened is it was imitated and it resulted in turning off a lot of the listeners because they they couldn't they couldn't follow it they couldn't memorize it it was nothing that they could leave the leave the venue with and 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 hum or whistle on the way home or at home and they when they you know it's not it's not music to to relax this is exa- uh, you are you are okay so uh, you said it forget the style you said it was a sound of music okay that you were going after yeah. And now I, yes. I I need you again. The show does weave into theory, but as best you can, rhythmically, especially the timekeepers of that time and how they use the symbols. Can you talk about yes. rhythmically what was because that's how you made it so hard to replicate. It was the rhythm. Yes. And I want you to talk yes, about it specifically. Was it was not bebop rhythm, like you said. It was done. It was not hard bop rhythm. It was this this yeah. early '60s. Again. They call it angry message music. To me, it's burning. Yeah. It's burning spiritual music that you would go home and you'd have to, if you were in touch with yourself, you'd have to think very clearly about what direction you were going. It made you think. Yeah. So please talk about it the made rhythm. You think, yes. Okay. The rhythm actually uh, was there. It developed in a, in in a way that uh, wasn't. Uh, restricted. I mean, I mean I, I'm trying to describe a, a, a rhythm that is not uh, measured in even segments. You know, like okay, you, you, you got a, a different time signature. Right. But I'm just as an example. Think of the four-four time signature, and the the, the rhythm players in, in in earlier times were tied to keeping the four-four time feeling. You know, it, it, it enabled people to dance to the music. You know, you, you could, you could, you, you can get your body involved in it. Uh, now, in modern music, the rhythm developed a, 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 a the players of the rhythm developed a, a, a way into where the rhythm sort of floats. You know, it's not sequenced the way the four four early four four time was was expressed. Uh, uh, and so you couldn't, could not, especially the public, couldn't really feel the music in the room that they felt, felt it before. They could, they could move to it because they knew where the, the they could feel where the, where the, where the beat was, where, where the ups, where the, I kind of put it, the uh, uh, upbeat and the downbeats were. Uh, because it was expressed by the drummer and the bass player and uh, other other rhythm players, but in 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 what they call free music, I don't like that term. I hate that term. Right. Um, the, the, in 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 this freestyle, uh, all of the music, all of the expression of the music uh, was uh, loosened. Let me put it this way: it was loosened to the degree that you. You had to know how to measure the the, the, base, the spaces in the music uh, because it, that was still there. I mean, that was still the multiplications of two in in the feel of the music. You know, the the, the two, four, eight, and sixteen were, uh, were they're still present, but they're just not marked by the drummer. Uh, the drummer, uh, you know, you 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 have to be secure in your ability to feel the music so that you don't depend on the drums and the bass to to spell it out for you. And uh, as a performer, uh, you have to, we have to uh, get used to being independent. 
you don't you can't rely on the drummer to give us the you know to secure the the the, the, the rhythm this is so uh, amazing i mean it must have that is so is that completely part of the african american is that good that traces all the way back to I mean, that to me is so stunning. It would blow people's mind where you're like, you can't rely on the on the rhythm section for rhythm, for time. You got to you got to figure yes. out your own time. That to me is yes. th- that is emboldening yes. stuff. Yes, yes, and it, it it it's a challenge, of course, uh, because if you're not experienced in in and secure in your own ability to keep time for yourself. Then you 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 have a problem. You have a large problem because you cannot uh, compete in in a uh, group. I shouldn't use the term compete. Uh, you you can you cannot perform uh, in in a group that that where where the rhythm is so uh, uh, hidden. Uh, I mean, the measurement of of of, of time and space uh, has to be personal. Uh, because you know you're free to the, the rhythm section enough to play music, you know, not to accompany the, the horns who are playing music. You know, you loosen the the, the the restrictions on the on the bed, on the drums and the, whatever other instruments that are, 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 have that that function of of, of keeping time. Uh, everyone must keep time. Uh, you don't necessarily have to, don't necessarily have to to mark time. You can play in time without actually marking it. Uh, and it's a challenge for, for the players. Who, and also who, let me just list. let me let me was the, can you talk about the forefathers of this? I mean, was it was it who where did the, where did the, this this is so intoxicating because. Um, it's so you freed up though that those rhythmic cat the cats that would normally be just playing four on the floor to be able to have their own voice. I mean, who were the four? Yes. In, in your mind, were the drummers the forefathers of this movement, or was it not? Was, was it actually composers like you? Or I mean, who was it that sort of was like, no, 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 we need to the African brass. We need to make sure that the rhythms speak and 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 sing to our cultural heritage i mean i I mean where did who who were the who were the people that started this whole concept oh boy um my introduction to uh, free music and it wasn't actually as free as it became i was when i was working with sun Ra in the early mid 1950s what would he say how would he how would he how would you how would how would you learn how did he Express non-verbally how the music would 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 flow and, and breathe. Well, well, he would uh, not dictate uh, what we were to play. He would give us a, a, a idea of, of, of the direction that, that he wants us to go in. He would, uh, oh, instead of having written music, and uh, he would dictate uh, what he wanted us to do. And when it came time to solo, he would just point to each one, each individual uh, to to take take the reins <laughs> and play and play. Yeah. You know, and yeah. we had to develop a unique uh, uh, ability to listen to what the, so- the sound of the group and make sense out of that sound. Identify the harmonic structures. And, and and be able to uh, instantly connect and can create a, a, a solo that is relevant to the sound of the band without specific instructions in the beginning we had to just go by instinct we had to just rely on our instincts by and rely on our ears and our ability to identify what we what we're hearing uh, and that's 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 sort of the precursor of of the freestyle free music style, because once we developed that ability, we didn't have to be tied to the structure structural music, music that has a specific structure and it's it's dictated either on paper or, or verbally, and uh, that was a, a, 
really a valuable uh, valuable uh, tool to learn how to perform uh, by instinct uh, and, and, and instantly uh, with the sounds that are present at that moment. And, I mean that's uh, jazz. That's jazz. I mean, right? I mean, yes. that's. I mean, that's the. Pro- there's no. Yes. There's no premeditation. You have no. T- you can't think. You got to improvise no, on the spot. No, it's brilliant. So Sun Ra. Right. Sun. Was there? I mean, Sun. Yes. This is because I. I'll be honest. It's not necessarily my bag. But you. You would say he was the forefather of this. Were there any other peeps at that time before it got? In re- my. Yeah. In my experience, he was the first mm-hmm. uh, to introduce me to uh, you know put me in a, in a in a situation where. I couldn't didn't have the uh, the uh, support of of uh, written music or someone dictating to me when to when to play and what to play and how to play. Uh, so that was my first uh, experience with that. It was it was odd uh, in the beginning, uh, and I didn't realize until later after I left. I didn't realize until after I was not with Sun Ra. I'd uh, gone on to New York uh, and was put in a position where I had to draw upon the experience of Sun Ra in order to survive. You know, uh, I was put in a position where I had to produce without the the uh, the um, support uh, materials. Uh, so I, I had to just just uh, on the fly create on the fly. And uh, without the Sun Ra experience, I would not have had uh, the knowledge to uh, be able to to perform in, the, in, in those situations. Well, let me ask, so let me, so when, you, when, when you, when you, so your first experience with this, you know, lack of rhythmic support, so to speak, uh, occurred with Sun Ra, but when you got to New York and you got on the bandstand, there were cats already that were also experimenting with it? I mean, was it sort of an osmosis? Like, it was just sort of in the air at that time? Or were, were actually, well, did you actually explain some of these concepts or even non-verbally express some of these concepts to peeps like Max Roach and people like that who, who maybe were thinking about it but hadn't yet tried it? No, I did not. I didn't have the, the nerve <laughs> to, to address, <laughs> to, 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 to address yeah. Max Roach's that was just okay. one name, that, no, but I'm saying you 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 yeah. said that you said when you got to New York you wouldn't have survived without that prior experience. So I'm trying to think what were right. what were the experiences I, I, when you got to New York where you had to just think on your feet. Yes, well, uh, in, in, mo- in most of those situations with Max and Phil, with Philly Joe Jones, you know, we, we had script to, to relate to, uh, and uh, but. It, 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 there were instances when the the, the, the situation uh, was changed. Maybe the in, in in some instances the music was wasn't present. You know, the written music wasn't present. Uh, I remember one occasion when uh, in Duke Ellington's band, uh, the 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 whole library was was misplaced on, you know, on an airplane. Uh, hmm. When we arrived at the <laughs> at the at the, the city and the venue, that was the written music was was wasn't was the present. So uh, uh, amazingly, we played the show <laughs> without music. <laughs> that must have swung so hard, though, man. That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it did. Holy it did. cow! I mean, yeah, it was amazing. Holy I was amazed, cow! You know that. You know, but I had, I had to rely on instinct. You know, I had heard you know a lot of Duke's music. A bit, you know, prior to I I don't really learn a lot of his music, uh, and uh, it happened at a time when I was with him. And we had already played the charts, so I had a you know a, a somewhat of a recollection of of how the how the charts went. So uh, I was able to. To respond it, 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 in that situation, uh, and you know, I had the sense enough if if, if I felt that I, I wasn't uh, ready, I just wouldn't play. If if I didn't feel that I, I, I was secure in in, in in what I produced or what I was contributing, uh, I, I just refused to you know to to uh, guess 
at, at what should be done. I would just wait until I, I felt secure, and then I would participate. And that was okay. Uh, that became uh, a, a, a habit of mine, you know, uh, and I actually, when I was teaching at Cornish College, I, I expressed that to my students that, you know, if, if, you, if you don't feel it, if you don't hear it, don't play. Well, that's what, I mean, that's play. what, uh, who was I just talking to? Uh, yeah, just, uh, I was talking to this, this, uh, bass, this bass player cat came out of the Bay Area, uh, Robert Caston, and he, uh, he said Herbie was like, uh, you know, I said, Miles, you know, sometimes I don't even know what to play. And Miles said, well, if you don't know what to play, then don't play anything. You know, <laughs> like, just yeah, don't yeah, play, yeah. you know, <laughs> you yeah. know, just don't play, right. man. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. hey, hey, you know, we've been cooking for an hour. Um, I we have just begun to scratch the surface. Can we can we set up a time to do part two? I'm having a ball right now. But I mean, it's we've already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to do you want to do like uh you want to check your book Wednesday or Thursday this week? I mean, I want to hit while we're hot. I mean, this is like, you're just giving me, uh, I didn't even, on. we're just dwelling. We haven't even gotten out of the early sixties yet. Right. Right. Okay. Hold, hold on. I'll, yeah, I'll get my no time. problem. Hold on. Yeah. Talking to Julian Priester here on the Jake Feinberg show, multi-instrumentalist and a guy who's been all around this world traveling and promoting jazz and promoting education and, um, you know, played with a lot of Titans. And as we already heard, uh, the uh, lack of rhythm uh, was uh, really the the non-rhythmic concept of free music started under Sun Ra, which was just just a total revelation today. This is also a cat who was on the bandstand with Bo Diddley and and Muddy Waters earlier in his career, and was obviously steeped in the spirituals of the church. So when it all comes together, you get a you get a pretty profound cat and Julian Priester. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean right. it's been a long time. So I'm, I'm looking here Wednesday or Thursday at two p.m. This is a good time for you. Okay, I think Wednesday is best for me. All right, I'll call you Wednesday at two p.m. Okay. Okay. All right. Much Great. love, Julian. I had a ball, man. Thank you. Yes. All right, Jake. All right. Cheers. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 That's it for the Jake Feinberg Show. We'll be back tomorrow, Independence Day, with uh, <clears throat> Sonny Charles. Uh, until then, uh, be cool, stay cool, and we'll be back. Peace.